Alistair Stevens. Today's question comes to us via a message on the StoryWonk forum, forum forum.storywonk.com, from the wonderful AR who writes, In two weeks' time, I have to write a speech on a delicate topic. It's for Holocaust remembrance, and I have to read it in front of a room of people, including Holocaust survivors. Reading publicly is a moderate to serious phobia of mine. I wonder, since you and Lonnie are both good at public speaking, if you would ever consider a podcast on the subject. Thank you for getting in touch, AR. I absolutely would. And this is it. It may seem like an odd fit for the journeyman writer, where usually we talk more about the writing of the thing than the speaking of the thing. But both disciplines are improved immeasurably by an understanding of and respect for one's own unique voice. Everyone sounds different. There are rhythms and structures. There are grammatical fingerprints in everyone's speech. We choose different words and phrases, both consciously and unconsciously. We filter the common speech of every place we've ever lived, every community we've ever interacted with, every culture we've ever known. We go through phases where we use the same word or the same construction all the time. We hesitate and agree and disagree in unique ways, and we buy time with unique constructions. We have a natural way of communicating each of us that, for most of us, gets the job done, day in, day out. And that natural means of communication, that voice, is a unique identifier. The uniquity of an individual's voice, by the way, is oftentimes exaggerated for fictional characters. When it's done well, it gives you a character with a unique voice that is easily identifiable, but still capable of expressing a full range of emotion. Think Lorelai Gilmore from Gilmore Girls or Mal Reynolds from Firefly. But when it's done badly, it reduces the character to tics and to affectations. I've talked about the X-Men comic book character Gambit on podcasts before, a character so swamped with Cajun flavor that his dialogue was oftentimes impenetrable. It's also common when writing nerdy characters who are prone to unnecessary sesquipedality and thesauric unconventionality intended to imply greater intellect. We've, We've all done it. How does that relate to public speaking? Well, One of the most common problems you'll find with the pros of new writers or with inexperienced public speakers is that they will sound stilted and inauthentic. That's reflective of an instinct that comes from a good place, I think. You want, naturally, to elevate your tone to match your surroundings, which is the kind of tonal shift we all navigate a dozen times a day. Think of the way that you talk to your children or your partner, your neighbor, your boss. Usually, we try to match our tone, our voice, to the specifics of the situation. And when we don't, it's usually a conscious choice to emphasize the difference, to exert authority or deference. So we take public speaking seriously, and we take writing books seriously, so we adopt a perfect, crisp, refined voice. But if you go beyond the natural range of your voice, you're going to sound inauthentic, and you're going to feel uncomfortable. Now, you can exercise your range and practice expressing yourself in a more formal way, but that takes time, and not just time spent rehearsing or revising a single text, but working through many, many texts of many different types and styles. If you want to have a natural voice that sounds like the perfect, clipped, precise delivery of a newsreader, then you can have it, but you'd better start practicing now. But here's the thing. Whether you're speaking in public or writing a novel, your audience doesn't need perfection. Your audience seeks authenticity, emotion, vulnerability. The best public speakers aren't those who remove every hesitation and variation from their delivery, and the best writers aren't those who craft with mechanical precision a grammatically perfect page. Your voice is your most powerful tool, and understanding its strengths and weaknesses is a vital part of effective communication and confident, engaging expression. When you write or speak honestly, in a way that is natural to you, you're going to feel more relaxed and sound more sincere, and your audience can tell. Go back, if you dare, and listen to my very early podcasts, and you'll find a very different energy and delivery. I was outside of my comfort zone. It took me 300 episodes to figure out what I was doing, to the degree I figured out what I'm doing. (laughs) How, then, do you identify 
express and strengthen your voice. Well, as with so many things, there's no way to do it but to do it. You need to write and to speak and then look back at what you did. What sounds natural and engaging? What makes you stumble? You may be very sensitive to rhythm or to accidental rhymes or alliteration. You may hesitate over a particular grammatical construction or find that you need to draw breath more or less frequently than you expected. So here's an assignment. Pick something that I've covered here on The Journeyman Writer up to and including this very episode and explain it yourself in your own words. Write it out first, then read it aloud and record it. Oh, and becoming accustomed to the sound of your own voice on a recording is invaluable too because your own sense of how you sound is so unreliable. Listen back to the recording and try to pick apart what sounds strong, confident and natural and what sounds inauthentic, stilted and awkward. Look for patterns and constructions and phrases that you particularly like, and those that will always trip you up, cause you to hesitate. In general, talk a little more slowly, though I admit I'm a fine one to talk, and emphasize clarity over complexity. Simple words can carry a lot of weight when they're delivered with sincerity. For writing, of course, the reading aloud part of the process is less important, though it can still be useful for some. Instead, focus on the turns of phrase or the textual details that you enjoy about your own work and seek to understand how they're connected to your unique voice. When you are writing in your voice, you'll work more quickly and more engagingly and your reader will thank you for it. Understand, too, that any time you write, any time you speak in public, you are expressing a vulnerability, you are sharing of yourself. It is okay, it is inevitable that you will feel nervous, that you will feel vulnerable, but there is a power and a grace in that. Vulnerability is that means by which we connect to other people emotionally. And by allowing yourself to be vulnerable, you are giving your audience a great and powerful gift. I wish you, AR, the very best of luck, and I hope you'll get in touch with us and let us know how it goes. If you, dear listener, have thoughts of your own, if you have advice that you can share with AR to help get over that first immense hurdle, then please do so. You can email me, podcast at storywonk.com. You can find me on Twitter, at storywonk, or you can stop by the aforementioned forum at forum.storywonk.com, where we can perhaps share some more advice on this tricky and treacherous subject. I will be back on Wednesday with more. Until then... Go right.